Hi there, my name is Adeline Robinson. Welcome to my channel. Today I am doing a tutorial video on how I draw a snake. This is a speed drawing. The whole process took about an hour and a half to do, but I condensed it down into 20 something, 20 something or so minutes for you guys. Um, but if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below in the comment section and uh, let me know how you guys like the video. Thanks so much, let's get started. Alrighty, so I've chosen this little European grass snake by Wiki Images on Pixabay. I highly recommend using Pixabay for references as they've got free images to use and learn from. I use this all the time for a lot of my drawings. The green mamba I did recently was uh, found through an image on Pixabay. You can actually see it right there. Um, so I chose that as my subject today. Um, definitely check it out. Uh, this photo is a nice example to start with. The snake has really large scales and the photo has pretty good detail. So I'm pretty comfortable drawing that because uh, you can have some nice big bold scales there to start with and then add as you go. European grass snakes are small non-venomous snakes found near water. Their favorite meals are amphibians and can be found hunting frogs and toads by small streams and rivers. Their range can be found from the UK, Spain, northern parts of Algeria, Libya and Morocco, Italy, Turkey, parts of southwest Russia to the southern parts of Sweden and Finland. I feel like an Animaniacs character right there. Alright, down to business. Supplies used in this video. I used a mechanical pencil, a kneaded eraser, Copic Sketch Sketching Grays, Copic Chow with E00 and E11, the Copic B39 Prussian Blue for the eye, Pigma Micron Pen for the scales, a Jelly Roll Pen for the highlights, and a Moltau White Acrylic Paint Pen. I also did use a couple color pencils in there. I don't quite have all the Copics, um, so they're pretty much going to be used just for really light color. So to start, I use a simple mechanical pencil to sketch out the snake. They take care to note where the facial scales begin and end. Some species, they can look seriously nearly identical, like you can't even hardly tell them apart, save for a few different scale patterns. So. I try to be as accurate as possible. Um, obviously nothing is perfect, but I could try. This isn't going to be an exact rendering of the photo. We're going to use it just as a reference, as an example, and we're going to have fun with it. So I'm going to use a little bit of artistic liberties there, and this is just supposed to be fun. Now some people say it's frowned upon, but I don't discourage tracing, especially for beginners. I still highly recommend practicing and learning to draw by eye, but if you're having trouble and you want to practice some coloration, I do recommend it. There's no right or wrong way to do art, as long as you're putting in your work and effort. There's many professionals that I know that use this method, and it just lays down the foundation to build upon. It's not like you're literally copying the entire thing. You're just literally doing light tracing just to make sure you get your proportions right. So once the basic outlines are lined out, or laid out, I sometimes take an eraser just to make the lines as faint as possible so it doesn't show through the color I lay on top of it. Um, it's got a bit of a cream undertone, so with any image, I look at the lightest color of the animal and start from there, and I slowly build up in layers. So here I bounce back and forth between N0, N2, and E00, and I go a little bit darker on the head and on the underside of the scales to show a shadow, but as you can see, it's just a lot of building up of the lightest colors. So you just look at the photo. Look back at the paper and just look at those dark areas and build from there. So don't mind me, I'm just adding a gazillion layers. Um, so I go with a little bit of a darker gray here and just kind of add that in. It's kind of dark on top and on the bottom. I'm gonna add some shading to them. It doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just kind of laying it out. Here we go with the eyeball. Again, using a darker gray now. And just kind of laying out the eye and then the facial scales. So it skipped ahead a little bit in the video, but you can pretty much see, I just pretty much outlined them for the most part and added some of the dark spots of color. So I go through and outline each of the scales. The more layers that you build, um, the easier it is for the scales to kind of get lost when you make them really light. So I sometimes do it a couple times just over the layers that I'm working on to keep in mind where they're at, but try to go as light as possible. 
some of the scales are going to be dark, some of them are going to be pretty light, so I want to make sure that I keep those light scales um, from getting way too dark. So each of the scales there. It's going to actually be pretty therapeutic drawing scales. It's either, either therapeutic or frustrating, depending on the, the type of mood you're in, I suppose, but I usually find them relaxing. And then here, using another light gray and slowly building it up. Just looking at the image. I've got it pulled up on my computer right there and I'm just looking ahead, looking at where they've got those dark spots and coloring it down. Adding a little bit of shading for his lip. Snake lips. And there we go. He's got a little bit more shading in the drawing than he does in the photo, but we're just having fun with it. And then going with each one of the scales. This is how I like to build up scales, personally. Um, go with the lightest tones possible and then just slowly build them darker, going from the bottom up. As you can probably imagine from, I don't know if you practice sphere, drawing spheres or anything like that in school, but um, you know, you usually just have it darker down below and then the highlights on the top. Once again, I'm adding some more darks, and you'll see a lot of this, a lot of me grabbing the same markers over and over and just kind of darkening, lightening, darkening. And a little bit darker. And for these, I pretty much never use black. Um, I remember one artist recommended to me, build, if you're going to go for a black type color, build it up with other colors. Um, it kind of adds a richness to it rather than just doing a straight black, which really does help. So here we're outlining the dark scales, keeping in mind where they're going. And then slowly darkening them up. You'll probably hear me say that a lot. And then adding a little bit of highlights to the top to make them a little more 3D, make them pop. And adding some pattern. The nice thing about drawing wildlife and animals in general or things with pattern is sometimes you can make an accidental little smudge or make a little spot here and there not meaning to and uh, you can kind of just use it to your advantage. Turn it into a little pattern or turn it into a little freckle. You know, nature isn't usually perfectly smooth and um, pristine. Animals have all kinds of little scars, bumps, freckles, spots, patterns, so it's kind of fun to add that to it. Makes it a little more organic. So here I add the canary yellow very lightly, just over the, the lightish cream parts. The photo is a little bit more yellow than cream, and I don't have any yellow, light, light yellow Copics yet, so. We're just making do with color pencil for now. Maybe one day. One day I'll get the collection. If I win the lottery or something. I guess I ought to start playing the lottery to be able to win it. Oh well. Color pencils work really well though. Um, it's really nice because you can layer them on top of each other very well. Here we do the dark brown. A little bit on the top of his head and just slowly go all the way around. Again, the lightest strokes possible. Slowly building up. Here I use one of the grays and it's crazy just how much it darkens that brown. I'm a huge fan of using these gray tones because you can transform different colors into completely different tones. Go underneath the lip right there, underneath his, his jaw, and then adding a little bit of skin tone color on top of him, or cream, and then more shading. These blend so nicely together.
Lots and lots of scales. And just see, slowly building them up. Lightest degrees. I actually tried using a blender for a second there, but didn't really think I needed it. Didn't really do a whole lot, so I didn't include it in the video, but I don't think it's necessary. And lightly darkening even the lighter scales now. Kind of ma keep keeping them all mapped out essentially. Darker again. Getting the eyes darkened. And then here, I kind of modified his tongue a little bit. Um, in the photo, it's a lot longer and comes out a bit more. And I wanted it to fit on the page, so I just made it a little bit shorter. I did it with gray. Lining each of those scales again. Like I said, it's kind of a bit of the same steps, just over and over on top of each other. Making those dark colors pop. Apparently I went to go do something real quick. Should have cut that out, but eh, here we are. <laughs> Adding the dark parts to the tongue. A little more to the eye again. It's weird because as you're building up, sometimes it looks very flat. So you just gotta keep on with it. Here I'm just adding little spots of pattern, little freckles. In the photo he's got all these little tiny spots on his scales, so I thought it would be fun to add those in. It gives him some character. Outlining those scales once again. And more grays. Apparently Copic makes like, I think 48 shades, 40, 46, something like that, shades of gray. Right, adding some more dark to the eye, and I'm blending in that highlight so it doesn't look super strong. A little bit more darks. I really like the pencil texture as well because it adds almost like a little little bit of a gritty texture on the paper and it, it shows up really well on the scales. Added a little bit of blue to it, but it didn't really show through very much. I tried it with the pink as well, but it didn't really pop too much. All right, Micron pen time. These pens are absolutely amazing. Um, I love the Micron Pen 005. It's very precise. It's a very thin tipped pen. So I outline all the scales as light as I can and um, add some little, more little freckles, more tiny little details. And it really makes those light scales uh, pop a little bit more without looking too dark. I use these pens all the time. Are a lot of fun. So I go through each one of the scales, so it takes a minute. I think this is usually when I get the micron pens out, I know I'm in the home stretch. That's one of the, the last steps I usually do.
under draw details. light scales. I'm adding more little freckles and pattern in here. bit more 3D. Especially with the scoots there. For those unfamiliar, scoots are what the bottom scales of a snake are called. Totally named after them because they scoot around on them. Just kidding. Adding some more cream. some more darks to the eye. And take it a micron pen to the tongue. darks a little bit more. And jelly roll time. The jelly roll pens are a lot of fun. They're great for highlights, um, as you can see here. So I like using them in a lot of my Copic pieces to kind of make them pop. 
And there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you decided to draw this guy, I'd love to see your artwork. Feel free to tag me on Facebook or Instagram. Um, like I said, I'd love to see your work. Uh, for more content like this, you know what to do.